Our first guest is Standing with Israel. He is a self-proclaimed Bangladesh Zionist and is the first uh, national to travel to Israel. We are very happy to have Dr. Shadman Zaman here. Hello and welcome Shalom. to the show. Shalom. Thank you. Thank you. This is so great. You're such a, you know, a fabulous role model. And I know you were saying that you came here like for the first time last year and you're already back. What, where did this interest in Judaism and Israel come to be? So firstly, I want to thank the, uh, the World Zionist Organization and Mr. Yaakov Hagoel for uh, uh, like arranging this uh, interview with you guys. Aww. And thank you for hosting me at your lovely uh, studio and also the Zionist Federation for this trip, the second time, mm -hmm. uh, my second time in Israel. Uh, so I come from Bangladesh. I'm a Bangladeshi national, Bangladeshi citizen. I don't, right now I'm, I work in UK as a doctor. And coming from Bangladesh, a Muslim majority country where you are taught to hate Israel in the, in the society, in the school, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be born in a well-connected, politically connected, powerful, and also, uh, how do you say, open-minded uh, family uh, where I had a, my grandfather who was one of the earliest Bangladeshi Zionists. So you can say I'm just wow. following up on him. And also a fun a fact is that my great-grandfather, my mom's uh, grandfather, served in the British military in Alexandria and Benghazi during the Second World War as a doctor. So I just think I'm working on the family footsteps. Footsteps, wow. Yeah. It's really amazing. So, But I mean, you really put yourself out there in a way. You were saying like you started being interested in Judaism as a young boy. Um, I started being uh, interested in Zionism. I read the book A Case for Israel by Alan Dershowitz. Thanks to my grandfather who got the book smuggled in from Singapore at wow. the age of 12. And you can say my induction to Zionism began at the age of 12. And then, uh, right now I'm 25, so <laughs> in 13 years I became a great Zionist and my Zionism connected me to Judaism. And uh, right now I'm converting to Judaism, Orthodox Judaism in London, uh, wow. under London Beddin. So um, also meeting Jewish people, meeting such great, amazing uh, people from the Jewish community in London also really motivated me to convert to Judaism. It's really, really unbelievable. Now, I mean, what's it like? I mean, this is a big deal. You're making history by being here and Thank being, you. you know, this is historic. I know. Thank you. But the thing, I know I'm making history, but I'm also making a statement. Is I want to tell, use this platform to tell uh, people from Bangladesh especially that Israel is a democratic country, a democratic state which provides equal rights to all of its citizens, which I saw in this trip, in my first trip, which provides equal rights to all of its citizens, irrespective of their religion, ethnicity, color. And I sincerely believe Bangladeshi people and also Israeli people, but Bangladeshi people would benefit greatly by being friendly, friendly with Israel. And I hope Bezrat Hashem very soon that day <laughs> is, uh, is going to come when Bangladesh and well, Israel Well, listen, it's so friends. great that, yes, we, you know, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you, but for you to have this platform to do with this, however, you can't now go back to, to Bangladesh to actually talk about your The beliefs. thing is, I can't go back to Bangladesh because I'll be charged with high treason at the airport because my passport says this wow. passport is valid for all countries of the world except Israel. It literally says except Israel. Except Israel. It literally says that, but my parents are there, and um, I hope I can go and visit them someday in my country, and my friends are all there, so um, I How really do your friends so. and family feel about this? Uh, about the conversion or about Zionism? Yeah, they're just about the conversion. Obviously, so they're Zionists, but, you know, it's, uh, are, they gonna, are you going to get them to come, come to England and do Shabbat with you and things like this? I would love to. The thing is, uh, conversion, my dad, is, as I said, is an atheist, so he's, he's okay with it, sort of. He says... Uh, you are 25, so it's your decision. My mom makes, my mom, who is a practicing Muslim, by the way, makes the ultimate sacrifice. She actually looks up Shabbat times in, uh, in, the, in Google and actually calls me accordingly so that I don't get disturbed during wow, Shabbat. Wow, what a woman. And actually, we were talking when I was at the Kotel this time, that my, I was talking to my mom and my, we, we were talking that, well, in two, three years' time, maybe, hopefully, I can bring my mom here uh, legally, very pro normally, and uh, she can pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque or Temple Mount, and at the same time, I'll be praying at the Well, listen, this is a very strong statement, uh, you know, and do you believe that, that, you know, through, you know, these types of efforts, we could find kind of a way to have, you know, solutions and better understanding of our different cultures and of religions? Of course, of course, of course. That is why I'm here, because uh, 
through only through talking and mixing together and um, I, I don't know the right word dialogue, here maybe dialogue, dialogue mm -hmm. yeah uh, we can actually know each other we can know we can actually know how similar it is like I'm just gonna give you two examples we come from Abraham yeah we all come uh, but that's the religious example the right. cultural you know the word pita pita means bread mm -hmm. pita also means bread in Bangladesh uh, the word for carrot is uh, gajor in Bangladesh, no way. and gazer uh, in uh, gazer yeah. in Hebrew. So your Hebrew is going to be better than mine in no time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to learn. Wow, really, yeah. it's really uh, amazing what you're doing. And let's Thank also you. talk about you know just the fact of you know what's going on in your country. I mean, is is it getting worse? You know, it seems like there's a lot of you know Islamic um, zealots that are really kind of. You know, infringing on just basic Sunni. What is it? Eighty-five percent or eighty-seven? Eighty-seven percent. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, the current government is a socialist, progressive government. But there, as I, as I, as you said, there is eighty-seven percent of Sunni Muslims, and most of them are indoctrinated into the Wahhabi ideology, which actually calls Jews with worse names that I don't want to mention. So in was it really today. growing up? Did they really actively say bad things about yeah, Jews? Yeah, I was like always just... told Israel is the root cause of all problems. Jews are the, in, in even in some of my school textbooks, it was said Jews are the mirror images of Satan, and all those things. So. I really thank my grandfather who actually wow. indoctrinated me into Zionism. Without we got to do some research on your grandfather. He, there's something going on with his well, family. Unfortunately, very he he passed away last year because of thyroid cancer. But um, he when I was he knew I was coming to UK. He had thyroid, so he told me that the first country. I should go once I get a British permanent residency is Israel. I didn't wow. wait. I just came with a Bangladeshi oh, wow. passport. Well, your grandpa is uh, a fine man and a good role model. Thank you so much. Thank you.